Hi, welcome to another episode of the Sankofa Pan African series. Please take a moment to subscribe if you've not yet done so. Thank you. Now we're going to be looking at uh, the beginning of intercontinental um, slavery in uh, in Africa. Another one of Egypt's exports to its neighbors was religion. As far back as the 3rd century BC, the cult of Serapis spread to the islands of the Aegean Sea where people were invoking Serapis and Isis as saviors. Now, the worship of these Egyptian gods spread very quickly to Babylonia and India. Some historians believe that one of the ways in which the worship of these gods survived Christianity was through the proliferation of statues of uh, the Madonna, Mary, the mother of Christ. Jean Leclerc stresses the role of black Africans in spreading the cult of um, Isis as exemplified by the sculpted head of a priest of Isis with features of a person of mixed race, um, which was found at Athens and which had been dated from the first century AD. Now, the significance of Egyptian religion in Islam is equally profound. For instance, one of the famous monuments in Alexandria was a lighthouse which ranked as one of the seven wonders of the world. Though it was completely destroyed in the 13th century, descriptions of this Alexandrian lighthouse are retained in the form of classical references by Arab historians and writers. The lighthouse was uh, recorded by several writers because it functioned until the time of the Arab conquests. It is actually believed that the Mameluk um, Sultan Kate Bay used stones from the ruins of this lighthouse to build a fort as part of his um, coastal defense against Turkish invasion of um, Egypt at the time. Now, Riyadh also writes that the Arabic word of Al, the, the Arabic word Al Manere means both lighthouse and minaret. And the Alexandrian lighthouse was the prototype for the minarets we now find in uh, mosques all over the world. Now, alongside material goods carried through um, trading caravans, Egyptians also brought their religion to their neighbors south of their borders in the in Nubia and beyond. Through the Empress uh, Theodora, who was the very influential wife of Emperor Justinian I of Byzanti Byzantium, Christianity was introduced to most of these areas. And a church on the bank of the Nile in an outlying district uh, was serving a Christian community as far back as the 6th century AD. And there is archaeological evidence to reveal how widely Christianity was established, even at village levels. Some historians believe that the early Christian period was a prosperous time for most of these areas. Even in Nubia, the early Christian period um, was seen to be a time of rapid economic growth. And in 641 AD, Egypt came under the rule of um, the Arabs, by which time the growth of Christianity with its patriarchates at uh, Alexandria was severed from the Mediterranean um, culture for a few centuries. Although the Arab had captured Nubia before they did Egypt, um, they did not 
consider the conquest of Nubia as significant. However, when Egypt submitted to the Arabs, it led them to sign a treaty with Nubia. The Arabs then forced Nubia to pay annual tributes um, of slaves and African goods. Now, I believe that this illustrates the fact that intercontinental slavery of Africans was started by the Arabs before Europeans um, came in and then perfected it during the transatlantic slave trade. Thanks for being a part of uh, this episode. Please don't forget to share and like our video. And please subscribe if you've not yet done so. See you next time.